Feeling Terrific, the podcast about mindset, different perspectives and talks with interesting people. Hi, my name is Christian Ter. I'm a recruiter in the IT industry. Glad that you're here and a warm welcome. Hello, I'm glad that you're here for a new episode. Today, I would like to provide you some insights from a recruiter perspective. Let's go. So before we start, maybe it's good to have a common understanding and therefore I would like to provide you three points. The first one is, so it's now, nowadays world is um, a world where there is a shortage of skilled workers and to have that realized is just for your benefit, right? So with that and combined with your yeah, openness, your your, your willingness to, to personal development, you can just thrive in this world. And with that, and what helps you with that is also the internet. So the internet provides you a lot of, a huge amount of possibilities, right? So it wasn't easier as now to gain knowledge, to, yeah, to, to become kind of a better person of yourself, not just when it comes to skills, to to um, professional knowledge, but also when it comes to your mind, to your mental health, to your physics, etc. Another point I would like to mention is the IT industry. In nowadays world and what we are currently seeing is that a lot of industries are struggling with the yeah, current situation. I think I don't have uh, to go in further details. But um, the IT industry, although there are a lot of layoffs, seen um, I'm con yeah, constantly on LinkedIn also due to my my job as a recruiter um, you can easily get kind of depressed although this is happening <clears throat> I highly recommend the IT industry I think that if you are within the IT industry and you are really skilled try to stand out try to develop yourself all the time you will get a job every time even though you are being laid off or you are taking a sabbatical and you are coming back you will have no struggle to find a new job and especially for example if you take a sabbatical i personally think that companies are finding you much more attractive because it's not not about that you took time off and oh what did you do during the time it's more like, okay, hey, this person, I don't know, traveled around the world and saw new, um, yeah, new cultures, uh, new, new, new people, different perspectives, and also when it comes to the, the language by, by itself, right? But furthermore, it's um, the experience you gain during the time, and this can be also a differentiator to your, yeah, to your benefit, basically. So let's try to have a focus on a strategic approach. And there I would like to yeah, kind of have a look at the application, per, uh, application perspective, but also when it comes finding the right job for you. For, first of all, I don't have the answer how you really can find the perfect job for you because I think it's totally subjectively. And with that, I mean, you have to first obviously think about, okay, what are your interests? Where are your strengths? Where are your weaknesses? And that combined with the underlying foundation, which is totally critical, is the self-awareness piece. If you are not self-aware, you will not, find out, will not find out your strengths, your weaknesses and your interests. And you really have to be open, transparent and also critic with yourself to really being able to find that for you. So now with that approach, you could or should have found um, a direction, right? I mean, let's be honest, um, nowadays the career path is, is kind of um, outdated. So what I would like also to intro to you um, today a little bit is the thinking of or the perspective of a career portfolio. There will be another episode which is totally focused on this topic, but just that you already heard it. 
So the other thing is, as we have now find out, okay, what kind of interests I do have, let's focus on the application part. An application part is kind of interesting. Interesting, therefore, because, I mean, you can do it like the old school way. You search uh, through LinkedIn, for example, or other job um, job sites. And if you have found, um, or when you have found um, uh, yeah, a job which is of interest for you, you click on apply and you apply the old traditional way. This is something I don't really recommend because there you are not standing out or at least the possibility of not standing out is quite high. So what I recommend is or also what um, I yeah, experienced over the time when I did get feedback from people I recommended this approach is so you have to think prior to that maybe think half a year um, before so when you when you are today uh, now thinking okay I want to do a move in spring next year right so that's the perfect timing because now you can um, take a more strategic approach first you can identify okay do I have connections within the company ideally yes if not then let's try to expand your network reach out to people and saying hey i'm following your company for a long longer time now i'm really curious what what it is you are doing and how it is working there and just find a common 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 ground with that person to have a door opener but also to be on the on the same level quite easily right and also try to come across like like grounded, not like that you don't have to be confident in yourself, but try not to be arrogant or something, right? Nobody likes that. And once you have um, once you have your first uh, connections, try to have conversations, right? Just fifty minutes or whatever. And those conversations will help you later on when it comes to the application so with that i mean once you have decided okay now it's the time now i want to make the move now i want to start having conversations and so on use your network first reaching out to the people or to one person you have met before so where you get all the insights where you gained um, more knowledge around um, the, the platform the, the the product basically and um yeah, have another conversation. Let's find out what's the current um, status within the company. Are they hiring? Um, do they have a hiring pause, a hiring freeze? Um, how's the company in general, um, etc. So once you have that, and ideally the the other person is saying, okay, hey, we have an open position. Um, would that be of interest? And you say yes, definitely. Then um, try to be recommended internally by this person. Once you have the first interview, usually with a recruiter, use that knowledge and the conversation you had uh, prior also to your benefit, right? For example, when the recruiter is asking you, okay, hey, why did you um, apply? Why is our company of interest for you and especially also this role? Then you can easily connect your knowledge you have now with, um, the, with the question, right? Say something like, hey, that's a very good point and um, I'll be honest I started thinking about it um, one uh, six months ago probably and um, there I, I realized um, okay I know about the company but I didn't know how did it, how it is working there and the reason why I reached out at that time to um, a colleague of yours and try to get some insights some knowledge some perspectives is because I really intrinsically care about my uh, about my, about myself and how how it is w with the people there because at the end i don't want to work for a company where i am just a number and so on so this answer now is ob ob obviously quite um, subjectively so please try to be authentic and um, this just um, yeah this is just kind of a inspiration to your to your thoughts how you can approach um, such a such a question right and that also shows the the recruiter for example but also the manager if you have a conversation with a manager that you did your due diligence that you really 
really care about this application pro process kind of and that it's not just another okay i don't know what what i want to do this is just a conversation or whatsoever right so really think strategically when it comes to such conversations and with that also saying there is also especially here in the german market um, still the topic cover letter and i really cannot recommend this because from a recruiter perspective or from an hr perspective those cover letters are just like okay something you have to do and everyone writes the same and everyone really writes okay i'm the best i'm this i'm this i, d I did this blah 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 basically this is kind of perspective um, recruiters and hr um, colleagues um, will have and therefore it is much more important how you are coming across within a first conversation usually and, and ideally via zoom microsoft teams etc basically with video and it's really important that you still be authentic transparent self-reflective so self-awareness what i've already mentioned in the beginning is also a key to that because let's be honest in the future of work without being or without having the the, the, the skill um, of, of self-awareness you won't succeed because the world is changing in such a rapid speed which requires adaptability right but also when it comes to to your mind you have really to be be, be self-aware if you are self-aware you know where your strengths and opportunities are and your interests and then you can use that and adapt quickly as needed another point i would like to mention is when it comes to the relationship with the recruiter during the, the process but also prior to that when we think about the strategic approach i mentioned think also about the relationship with the recruiter maybe also not just reaching out to someone who is doing the job at the company you you would like to work for but also reaching out to a recruiter who's working at the company start to build also the connection with this person prior to your application and with that or why i say that is quite easily at the end recruiter are also kind of salespeople and recruiter are measured also kind of when it comes to the pipeline this is kind of um so so this is one 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 side right but when it comes to the other side recruiter usually and ideally are intrinsically motivated to have also a network with great people right usually they are interested in building the network having interesting conversations and also which they can rely on in the future kind of and this understanding is very important because now you now with that understanding when you understand the recruiter and with the strategic approach what i mentioned in the beginning connect them connect them use it to your benefit but it's not just prior to the application process also when it's within the recruitment process when you have conversations with different people with different um, expectations from the um, specific um, interviews or conversations also use the recruiter for example first conversation with a recruiter went well recruiter recommend uh, moving forward but also it's not just from the recruiter perspective but also from you you have to use that conversation also to clarify for yourself is this what i want to pursue from a role perspective but also from a company perspective and that's why recruiter are having also a critical job because they are usually the first touch point or yeah touch point for for the um, candidate and provide the the first intro from a company perspective but this is another um, thing so this this with the first uh, conversation the next one would be then usually um, a conversation with a manager and there once it sets up set up use the recruiter ask questions like hey what is the conversation about who i'm going to speak with what's the background with, with this person how is the person thinking what motivates him or, or, or her 
right? And also trying to find out how can I or ask questions which would be helpful to gain information which would be of your benefit, which will bring which which will prepare you much better for such conversations, right? And do this after every step, after every conversation you had, also when it comes prior to the final interview, right? Usually there are use cases and so on. Use the uh, relationship with the recruiter. Ask the questions I've mentioned and try to figure out, okay, how can I make sure that I prepare myself best? Think of it as it is a sales opportunity, right? And just regardless of what role, of, uh, of a marketing role you're applying for, of uh, whatever, think, you have to think based as you would be as a, a salesperson, right? And what would, do a sales, what would a salesperson do? A salesperson would do and try everything to get more knowledge, more background, more insights regarding the situation, the people they are going to speak with. And that's what is crucial for your success. Another thing which I would like to mention is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a crucial platform you have to use in nowadays world. CVs are kind of, up to a certain extent, outdated, I would say, and LinkedIn is the alternative for that. LinkedIn is a professional network where you will present yourself, right? That's easily done with liking, um, commenting, also following um, companies or people you are interested in, right? And for example, a recruiter then can also easily find out more about you as a personality. What is your interest? What is your motivation? Is it something which, uh, yeah, which uh, which we can also provide you, right? When it comes to 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 the company and so on. So this is something um, something uh, crucial to have, in at least from my point of view. And also at the end, I would like to make another hint. So when it comes, I already mentioned it, and um, when it comes to having a career portfolio versus a career path, this is also very interesting. So the prior um, work world, kind of, they um, were thinking like career path. So I started with 21 in this industry, within this job, it's my destiny to be also there when I'm 60 or something, right? Forget about that, basically, because what I've already um, said is that it's crucial to be adaptable, to be open for new perspectives, for new ideas, and also to be and be yourself. So being flexible, open-minded, new to new approaches, ideas will help you survive and not just survive, but it also has impact on your happiness, right? Because when you're constantly in constantly having um, being confronted with uh, new thoughts, uh, new ideas, etc., you won't get bored. And I hope I can assume that you don't want to get bored, and therefore I recommend the mindset or the approach of a career portfolio. Thank you. I hope you took something out of this episode, and if not, let's try next time. Thank you for tuning in, and speak soon. And if you have any feedback, let me know in the comments. Stay true to yourself, and have a terrific weekend, your city.